Good evening and welcome back to the Rory Talks Football Channel, your daily Arsenal news updates, debates and my opinions. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe. Do you know what? I'm sick of saying let's get to 10,000 subscribers. Let's get to 9,800 subscribers. That We're a few away from that. So let's get to 9,800 and we'll focus on 10,000 after that. Um, if you could like the video, the live stream as well, it does massively help me out. Look, I'm going to I'm going to try and be God damn it. I'm going to try and be upbeat. I've been stream. I've been on two other streams today. I've made videos. I'm sick of being sad. So we're going to be upbeat. We're going to look to the future. We're going to look at how we can correct it. We're going to look at why it's not. It's not the end of the world. And there are it's small things. It's small things that we need to improve and we can improve them and we're going to improve them. So it, it's going to be an upbeat stream. Uh, there's loads of you here already, which I love to see. Pekka, Jakob, Sportcat, um, Shikar. Uh, I've, I, you've definitely told me how to pronounce that before and I've got it wrong again. Icarus, VV Vlad, Pedro, Emilio, Yoyoyoy, Verdi, Tentego, Max, Sam Shapiro, George Christodoulou. Uh, Vord, Chris, Inprops, Hannah, Frogs, Go, Quack, uh, Guna Milsey, Frazar, Drax, Absolute Cack. Good to see you all. But look, yesterday is done. It's done. It's done. It happened. I, it was horrible. I didn't expect it to happen. You didn't expect it to happen. But it happened, right? And we can talk about all the reasons why it happened. Um, it's, you know, we're, we've fallen into that trap today, I think. A lot of the online, at least, discourse has fallen into blaming one specific player, whether that's Zinchenko, Havertz, whoever else, or blaming just Mikel Arteta. And it's, you know, it's not overly useful. Because the reality is, yesterday, you know, if we'd taken our chances in the first half yesterday, in the same way that we had been doing when we were winning games 5 and 6 nil, It's 3 nil at half time. And we're sat on this stream laughing. We're sat on this stream laughing about Spurs and Liverpool. Um, the fact is, we didn't put those chances away. And, and they even fell to players. If I told you, if I had told you, look, the ball is going to fall to a player inside the six-yard box, and they'll have the entire goal to aim at, apart from Martinez, who stood on one side of the goal. If I said to you, who do you want that chance to fall to? Most of you would have said Trossard. And it did fall to Trossard. And he missed it. Because sometimes that can happen. You know, we had just been talking about how he's probably our most clinical player. And he is a clinical player. But that's just how it can go sometimes. And in that first half, it was unfortunate that it just all fell against us uh, and we made those mistakes. And then in the second half, that's where I pivot some of the blame towards Arteta. And I do think we could have handled things differently. But look, it's done now. We're not the favourites to win the league. Man City are the favourites. And if they go and win the remaining six games, they'll win it. And that's not in our control now. What is in our control now is the future. We can win all of our games. We've got a huge Champions League game coming up on Wednesday. Now, again, this can go one of two ways. Wednesday night, it can either be the season capitulates or we bounce back big time. We bounce back and we knock out Bayern Munich in Germany, right? That's what we're waiting to see. So any huge criticism being labeled at the team today, at least wait until Wednesday. At least wait until Wednesday. I'm more worried about our remaining fixtures. It felt like we could have lost one at most, but this shouldn't have been the one, uh, considering the games we have coming up. I agree. Look, I completely agree. And I think, you know, I said again and again and again, I said, I think all three teams will drop points between now and the end of the season. I didn't think Arsenal and Liverpool were both going to lose this weekend. I still think City will drop points somewhere. Will we go and win the remaining six and then win the league because City drop points? That's another question. Um, <clears throat> but look, things went wrong. Um, and, you know, it just happens. Uh, it happens. I think for me, the big thing, though, the big thing is that we still haven't figured out the left-hand side. I think of all of the, the tactical tweaks Arteta made, the players that underperformed, I think the left-hand side we've got to figure out. Now, 
It might be that this summer, that left-hand side can be figured out with one signing. The left central midfielder could fix it because we could have Timber coming back at left back. And, and, and if it works, the Timber comes in at left back, we sign the right left central midfielder, it brings Martinelli back into the game. Because if we're honest, Martinelli hasn't really been at the races this season. And I think it's because we've had such a disjointed left-hand side. Now, Martinelli's had injuries throughout the season, but he's also never had a consistent left-back and never had a consistent left cent central midfielder. The difference between our right-hand side and our left-hand side is crazy. Um, so I think, look, maybe we, maybe we need to go out and buy another left wing at long term. Maybe that is what we need to do. Maybe for what Arteta wants, Martinelli is never going to be the guy. But I think we go out and get a left central midfielder. And look, I know a lot of you are calling out Zinni in the chat. A lot of you are talking about Zinchenko. And a lot of people have been talking about Zinchenko. And I do agree. I do agree. I think we are, we're at a level now where Zinchenko doesn't raise the level of the team. That's, uh, you know, um, I think we, we saw it yesterday where the issue is last season, I thought what Zinchenko added when we had the ball was worth what we lost when he was defending. You know, what in terms of the, the frailty of him defensively, I thought those two things balanced each other out. I no longer think those things balance each other out. I think we saw when we had Jakub Kivior in for three months, we, we can score goals without Zinchenko. We can break down low blocks without Zinchenko. We can dominate possession without Zinchenko. But we were far more solid defensively without him. Um, so I agree. And, and for that, of course, you can label criticism at Arteta because Arteta decided to start Zinchenko. And in fact, since Zinchenko's become fit, he started the majority of games. And I do think that's wrong. I do think it's wrong. Um, but, again, it's, it's easy to fix. We have three other left-backs at the club already. We can go out and sign another one in the summer if we want to. So, and, and there's reports coming out today, even yesterday evening and today, from the Athletic, that you know there are two years left on Zinchenko's contract, and Arsenal have done no work in terms of renegotiating or negotiating a new deal or an extension. So far, there has been nothing in terms of extending Zinchenko's contract. So you know it might be that we are looking to move him on this summer. Um, we knew, but Arteta doesn't for some reason. Yeah, look, Arteta made mistakes yesterday. He did make mistakes yesterday. For me, moving Havertz from centre forward back into the midfield wasn't the right decision. I don't know why in that game, neither one of Jorginho or Thomas Partey started. I don't get it. I, I thought they should have done. I thought, and but by the way, I, and I think most of you, also made the mistake of underestimating that Aston Villa midfield. I think a lot of us looked at it and we said... There's no Kamara. There's no Douglas Luiz. We should win the midfield battle. I actually thought their midfield played really well yesterday. John McGinn played deeper. Tielemans played well. And uh, Rodgers had a really good game. Their midfield was good. It is what it is. It is what it is, you know? Um it's tough. It's tough. Why did Arteta randomly change the formation? I don't think it was random. And it wasn't random. I just think, you know, the issue was he was trying to play Jesus and Trossard. And if, if both of them play, one of them has to play as a centre forward. And if you do that, Havertz has to drop into the midfield. And I didn't agree with that. And if you watched... Oh, we've had two... Uh, 199 from Samuel Willem. Thank you very, very much. That is incredibly generous. Um, there's no message with it, but just uh, a 199 super chat. Samuel, thank you very much. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, I think it was. I think we under it. If you think about every single big game we've played against good midfields, Jorginho has played or Parte if he was fit, but mainly Jorginho this season. By not playing either of those two, I think that was an underestimation of Villa's midfield. 
I do. And that was, but I made that mistake. I'm not the manager of Arsenal. I'm allowed to. But I think Arteta made that mistake. And look, he's still going to make mistakes. He is still a young manager. And, and even experienced managers make mistakes. I think Pep Guardiola this season quite often has played Julian Alvarez in midfield and it's not worked very well. Now, luckily, City have enough good, I mean, elite players that that, that, that doesn't necessarily mean they drop points. But, um, you know, it, it was just a culmination. And, and this was the thing, right? Arteta got it wrong. Players on the pitch didn't take their chances. And towards the end of the game, they either ran out of gas or lost themselves mentally. But all of them happened in the same game. And that's the, that's the rough thing. Because we could have come out of yesterday with a win. We really could have done. With the chances we created in the first half, we could have done. And then we'd be going, you know, would we even have been questioning Arteta at that point? Maybe not. Maybe not. But even if we were, we'd be saying, ah, well, you know, I don't think that was spot on, but we got away with it or whatever. It's, you know, because we lost, obviously the conversation is very different. But uh, VV Vlad said, I hope this doesn't happen, but the mood will be destroyed entirely in just one week if we go out to Bayern. It will. It will. I mean, the, the, the best example of that is look at Liverpool. Liverpool basically, you know, they're not out of it yet, but they lost 3-0 in the Europa League. And so then immediately all of them went, oh, you know, sack off the Europa League. It's all about the Premier League now. And then they've lost to Crystal Palace. And it's like season over in the space of four days for them. Um, but yeah, the, the, the Bayern Munich game is huge. It is huge. Um, if we lose that, I, re- I worry then. If we lose that, I worry about how the end of this season goes. If we win it, I think we can bounce back. My other concern is that we've struggled to bounce back from losses without having a break. And we don't have a break. So that slightly concerns me. You know, I would love us to go to Dubai right now. Um, One bad performance and every Arsenal fan thinks we're finished. We just got to bounce back and go again. It's not over until it's mathematically over. Football is so unpredictable. Anything could happen. I kind of agree. Look. I do also look at it and I think, look, the Man City, you know, the the current generation, the current era of football with the way Man City are, I can understand why people immediately think there's no chance of us winning the league at that point. Because it's just, it's completely reasonable to say that Man City will go and win six games in a row. In, In previous eras with previous teams, that wouldn't be logical. But the current City team, it kind of is. Uh, Rory, how do you think the Palace result affected the team? Because I was watching it on TVs in the stadium and the crowd were buzzing. Yeah, look, the stadium was absolutely buzzing. If anything, I thought that should play the other way, though. Like, we were buzzing. That must have been a boost for the players. Seeing that, like, surely that's a boost for the players. So I don't really know. I I honestly... I. I don't think the result is to do with that. If anything, they're two different things. Um, do you see Betfred are already paying out? Yeah, Bet- Betfred have paid out on Man City winning the league. If you had put a bet on Man City winning the league with Betfred, they've paid you as if you've won already. They're two points ahead with six games to go. That shows you how in the mud the league is, to be honest. The fact that they've paid that out. Um Honestly, at this point, I would prefer losing the league to Liverpool if it meant City didn't get four in a row. It's just boring. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, City aren't the same team as last year. They've looked shaky defensively. All it takes is one shock result and everything's back on. We've got to stay positive and back the team. Even Zinnia, who I don't rate. No, I agree. Well, we've got to completely back the team. People that are downing to... I mean, I was... Look, everyone's got their own opinion on it. Everyone can make their own decisions. I was very disappointed at the number of people that were leaving the stadium yesterday. Uh, I mean, some people were leaving at 1-0. A lot of people started pouring out of the stadium at 2-0 when there were still, you know, there were still three minutes plus injury time left. There was over 10 minutes of football left and people were leaving at 2-0. I was very disappointed with that. Um, You know, I don't know. I'm not a fan of it. And I do think that that attitude, it it just can't be good for the players. It can't be good for the players if your attitude, the first time they face a bit of adversity in the whole of 2024, immediately you just turn your back. 
oh, they've done it again. Never going to recover. What a crap mentality. Well, you know, how, how can you expect the players to have the mentality if you don't have the mentality as a fan? That's an issue. Anyway, look, I don't want to be negative. I said we weren't going to be negative. We're not going to be negative. We're not going to be negative. Um, if Liverpool and Arsenal seasons uh, are over while being two points off the league, what kind of league are we playing in? Still all to play for and can't give up now? Exactly. Exactly. Uh, there's no point on changing the manager, but we are on the verge of becoming the best team in the world from next season. Uh, we just need one proper finisher. We do. I, I mean, that's the thing. That is the thing. And look, last week, 199 Super Chat from Matt Medias. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, thank you very much. Got to go. Enjoy the content. Have a good one. Much, much appreciated. Um, thank you very much. But, but this is the thing. When we were speaking last week about do do we actually you know ooh, do we need a do we actually need to go and get a striker is a striker the priority now because we've got Havertz and we've got Jesus a striker still the priority because there are such fine margins in the Premier League now when you're chasing Man City and you need to get ninety plus points bear in mind right if City win the league uh, if City win their remaining six games to win the league they'll end up on ninety one points. That's more than the Invincibles got. Like the, In terms of how far it's shifted in terms of what you have to do to win the league, even in a supposed off-season for Man City, they're on track to get more points than the Invincibles got, right? So there are such fine margins when it comes to dropping points that bringing in a clinical finisher, a Victor Gierkeres, an Isak, uh, whoever, that might just be the difference between you know, two or three games that they score goals in that, that are the difference between six, eight, nine points. And that's the league. That's the league. And so even if you have to go and spend 100 million to get those extra six, seven, eight, nine points, at the top end, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. Um, and, you know, I saw a stat this morning and it's sad, it's sad but look, I saw a stat, a stat this morning. Jesus has the lowest conversion rate of any striker or any attacker in the Premier League that's had 50 or more shots. Any single attacker. Jesus has the lowest conversion rate. And he's being replaced by Havertz, who, let's be honest, isn't exactly clinical. You know, he's scored a few goals, but he's not. You see Havertz go through, and it's not like you think, yeah, he's going to bury this. So that has to be that has to be the priority. Um, it really does. And on that, by the way, um, this came from Journal Noticias today, which I believe is a Portuguese outlet. Arsenal are impressed by scouting reports on Victor Gierkeres. Choo -choo! And the possibility of moving forward with a proposal to purchase the pass at the end of the season is increasingly likely. Uh, the value of the termination clause, 100 million euros, is considered non-negotiable by Sporting, but the English team hopes to reach an agreement with the possibility of exchanging or loaning players on the table. Choo -choo! The Victor Gürkeres train. We're going. We are going. Um, so yeah, that's coming from a Portuguese outlet. That we are, we are, I have no idea if it's reliable. <laughs> No, I think it's somewhat reliable for Portuguese news. I do think it's somewhat reliable. Uh, and then the Gazeta, um, Gazeta does something, I think it's an Italian outlet, uh, have said that Arsenal, Arsenal have narrowed down their um, their striking list to Gürkeres, Joshua Zerkzy, and Benjamin Sesko. Um, but for me, I mean, if you're talking Gürkeres, Zerkzy, or Sesko, Gürkeres, 100%. Um, how much do you think we'd have to pay Gürkeres in wages? Not a lot. Gürkeres wouldn't cost a lot in wages. It just cost a lot to get him out of sporting. Um, you know, I can't, he, he, he was in the championship last year. He's not going to be on much. So happy for Granite. Yeah, I'm very, very happy for Granite. It's a shame we couldn't really even enjoy Granite winning Bundesliga yesterday. And he scored. Um, why does the atmosphere go so flat when we go behind at the Emirates? Felt different last season. Expectations have changed. Um, I don't think... I don't know. I don't know, honestly, because it's not good. It's not good. Um, 
a, a part of it is definitely expectations have changed. Part of it is, you know, people blame the ballot, but the ballot makes up like a few thousand tickets. You know, four, over three quarters of the stadium pretty much is is season ticket holders. So the major, whatever's happening in the stadium, the majority of it is on season ticket holders. Now, that is either the season ticket holders themselves that are in the stadium, or it's because they sell their season tickets or put them on the exchange. But but either way, like I, I keep hearing people blame the ballot. I'm like, the majority of tickets are season ticket holders tickets. So um, I don't know. I don't know. I think part of it is 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 expectations changing. Um, I think part of it's just entitlement. I think part of it really is entitlement. You know, there's a feeling like we are, you know, Aston Villa are fourth in the league, by the way. Aston Villa are fourth in the league. And yet there was, yesterday, there was this feeling of like, we just should beat them. Like, no matter what. And it shouldn't even be difficult. Like, we should just... And maybe it's because it's Aston Villa and not because it's the team that's fourth in the table. But in years gone by, if that was, I don't know, Man United or Chelsea. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Arsenal play two league games before City play a league game. Potentially four points clear after Chelsea next week. Time to apply pressure. Oh, bang on. Bang on. We've got an opportunity. And, and by the way, that is a bigger opportunity than you realise. Because points on the board is the only way we can put pressure on Man City at this point. You know? The only... The, if they're going into the games at least knowing that it, we've already got the points, it is an extra bit of pressure. Now, look, I think City are fine under pressure, uh, but it, it is an extra bit of pressure. Rory, do you think we are missing a proper difference maker, like City has KDB or Rodri, or how Liverpool has Salah? Yeah, to an extent. To an extent. I think Erdegaard, do you know what, right? It's different because he's... It's different because of what he adds to the team. Yesterday in the first half... I thought Martin Erdegaard was unbelievable. Martin Erdegaard's first half performance alone yesterday deserved to win the game. You know, he was unplayable at times. And that, for me, should be a difference maker. But you have to have the other players then to capitalise on that. And I guess that's the problem. Uh, time to show character? Yeah, it is, it is time to show character. But, but also, right, time to show character was in the second half. Like Arteta came out and said, you know, this this is this this is when it's time to show character, um, how you bounce back from it. The time to show character was when our backs were against the wall in the second half and Villa started outplaying us and dominating us. That was the time to show character. That was the time for someone to pull that team together and say, We need to turn this around now. So it, it's it's tricky. Havertz was so bad yesterday. Was in on goal three times and looked slow and clunky every time. Um, I, I, there was one chance I thought he should have done better on. A couple of them I thought were really difficult, to be honest. I, I thought between Martinez and their defenders, like they are quick defenders. Martinez is quick off his line. I, I thought, I thought, yeah, I thought there was one that he should have done better out of those three. We've dropped 11 points against Fulham and Villa this season. That's just not good enough if you're trying to win the title. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but it is what it is. All we can do is learn, right? All we can do is learn. We don't have the complete squad yet. I still think that is... A, we, don't have the, we don't have the complete squad because I have no idea who's going to be playing at left back and I've got no idea who's going to be playing in left central midfield. And for me... As much as it's great to have versatile options, I do feel like we should get, you know, you should be at the point where you can pretty much name the best 11. I do think you should have that. And the left back and the left central midfielder, we don't. Uh, what's up, Rory? Title over? The title's not over. It's just further away now than it was at the start of yesterday. Timber is the left back, but it's just the fact he's been injured. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't help. I, I do think Timber would have been huge. Uh, by the way, the under-21s are playing today and Timber is not in the squad. Uh, so we're still... Uh, yeah, we're still no closer to seeing Yuri and Timber back. I was sitting where the domination was on the opposite halves of both times. Not my most fun watch at the stadium. 
Um, yeah. Yeah, I was pretty much on the halfway line yesterday. I had a good seat, but why do you think Mikel's uh, took Ben White off? I saw Tommy and was happy because I thought it was Zinni coming off, but was shocked to see it was Ben White. Um, one, Ben White was on a booking. I think that's the first reason. Uh, two, I thought he was losing to Zaniola. I thought Ben White in the second half was losing the physical battle to Zaniola. And it was actually really allowing Villa to get out. Like Villa were going long to Zaniolo, and more often than not, he was holding it up and winning it. I thought that was a problem. Um, why Zinchenko stayed on for as long as he did is another question. I thought we could have brought Kivior on, but uh, I forgot about Timber. Hopefully his recovery goes well and Arsenal don't need to buy another left back. Yeah, I don't think we do need to. If Saliba gets an ACL, then what? City have a Kanji, a Kanji, Ake, Gvario. Yeah. But, but, so this is what I would counter that with, right? Other than Gvardio, Ake and Akanji were not considered elite players until they were at City with Pep. Aka no, when they signed Akanji, no one was going, you know, he's an unbelievable centre-back. When they signed Ake, I mean, it was Chelsea, you know, Chelsea didn't want him. So... You know, Gvardiol is one that they went and spent a lot of money on and, and it was obviously a good player. But I do think there's an element of, of people look at players once they've bedded in at City and they don't remember how they actually perceived that player before they joined City. And we need to do more of that as well. You know, we can't just go out and buy the best players every time. You know we can't do that. I think that's something that we would have seen with Timber. I don't think outside of the Arsenal fan base, people massively rated Yuri and Timber. People knew he was a good player. Um, I want Murillo. He's been class and could go for cheaper than usual due to FFP. Possibly. Yeah, I spoke of that, about that previously. I wouldn't mind it. Jesus was dreadful yesterday. Better out wide than out front. Look, I think, I think, unfortunately, serious questions need to be had about Jesus because he's lost his pace. Like, he, he wasn't the quickest player anyway, but he's lost more than a yard of pace. And it affects everything, really, because he was the best presser that we had. And yesterday, Villa were more than happy to play out from the back. A part of that is because Jesus, even though he knows when and how to press, he hasn't got the pace anymore to do it. Um, you know, he was caught offside multiple times, but he has to try and get that advantage because he knows he doesn't have the pace over the defenders. I, 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 I worry. I do worry that I'm just not sure how he fits in anymore. Um, do you think the title's gone? Uh, no, Tom, I don't, I don't think the title's gone. I just think it's a lot further away now than it was. Um, you have to remember that he's playing in pain. He is. He is playing in pain, but, you know, does that? if he's got to have more surgery in the summer, that's three, that's three knee surgeries in the space of 18 months, all trying to treat the same injury. That's that's that 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 is just a problem in itself. Um, it's a problem in itself. I just don't think we can spend a hundred million on a striker, sixty to eighty million on a midfielder, fifty million on a Saka backup, and about ten million on a backup goalkeeper. And people want another centre back. Yeah, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. It is going to be tough. Opinions on Saka? I didn't think he had a bad first half. Um, you know, um, he's clearly playing for injury. He, he's, and people, like, I'm getting really, really frustrated by these, you know, people clipping up him limping at the end of the game um, and making out that he only limps at the end of the game. He's limping through most of the game. Like, at the moment, he is genuinely limping through most of the game. But we don't have an alternative. That's the issue. Jesus, yeah, Jesus should have scored from the back post. Well, no, Jesus, when he had that back post header, should have headed it straight back across. The angle was never there for him to score. Um, how bad do you think Ben White's injury is? God knows. God knows. Ben White's playing through injury. I mean, Erdegaard went off injured, by the way. We, ha we haven't even spoken about the fact. Mikel Arteta said the reason he took Ben White off was injury. He said he couldn't continue. Well, how bad was he that he couldn't continue? And is he going to be fit for Wednesday? 
another problem. Um, team for Wednesday. I'll do that on tomorrow's stream. I'll do the team for Wednesday on tomorrow's stream once we've had uh, updates from Arteta. I mean, Arteta probably won't actually tell us who's fit and available, but if Erdegaard misses even a few games, that season over. Yeah. Are we going to have Tommy and Kivio? I'd imagine, no, I'd imagine it'll be Kiv I'd imagine it'll be White and Tommy. I hope it's White and Tommy. Or White and Kivio. Ah, the thing is, Kivio struggled against Sane, but I'm not even convinced that Tommy Asu won't struggle against Sane. Like, he is blistering quick. I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be so tough. Uh, I think we should change to 3 4 3 and make Zinchenko a left mid and Timber an extra centre back. Yeah, but that's just not what Arteta wants to do. Arteta doesn't want to play five at the back or three at the back. Gabriel wasn't in training. Uh, is he also playing through an, in, in, an issue? Yes. Ga Gabriel has um, basically got... He's basically got tendonitis in his, in his Achilles, which basically means his Achilles tendon is constantly sore and inflamed. Um, that's why he's not training. That, that's why he wasn't training. He probably won't train between yesterday and the, the Bayern game. And again, these are all issues that we somehow got to try and fix in the summer. By the way, got to try and fix those issues in the summer when the majority of our squad will either be playing at the Euros or Copper America. It, it's not looking good. Uh, how much do you think we'd get for Zinchenko if we sold him in the summer? 25 mil. I'm seriously starting to doubt that we'll see Timber play before the end of the season. Yeah, I mean, it's not long left, right? It's just over a month. The end of the season is it's current today is the 15th of uh, April. The final day of the season is the 19th of May. It's basically just over a month. Is Timber going to be in an under 21s game at least? Then Arteta said he's going to be in a, in a behind closed doors game. Then he's going to be back to being on the bench. You know, we might see him last couple of games of the season, but that'd be it. Uh, school starts tomorrow. School. On a Tuesday. Why don't you start on a Monday? Um, I'm dreading the Champions League away leg. I'm seeing a loss right now. What's your thoughts? No, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I am seeing a win. I've just got, I've got a feeling we bounce back. I really do have a feeling we bounce back. I've got a feeling we bounce back. I'm feeling a win. I'm feeling a win. I'm feeling a win. What are our chances? In set day, teacher training. I see, I see, teacher training. Um, yeah, look, Bayern Munich are the favourites. Bayern, even before yesterday, I think Bayern Munich are the favourites. They're definitely the favourites now. But I've just got a feeling that we win. I'm feeling a win only on penalties, though. I don't know. Penalties away at the Allianz. Neuer in goal. Tough. Tough. No Davies, no Nabry, no Coman. We will win. Yeah, the left-hand side for them is not looking good. Who do you think will win between Barca and PSG? Barcelona. Do you think Zinni is too attacking? Zinni is too risk-taking. Zinni takes... like, And I'll give you a prime example yesterday. Of, of a mistake that he made that he didn't need to make that got Villa on the front foot. And when it happened, everyone in the crowd goes, oh, in a way that they wouldn't for other players, right? But we had the ball. I think it was basically we had the ball in their box. I think it was from a corner or something. We had the ball in their box. It gets cleared way up into the air, right? And the ball is coming down. And Zinchenko is pretty much our deepest defender at that point. And the ball's coming down over his shoulder. Leon Bailey's pressing him, or Diaby's pressing him. Someone's pressing. I think it was Bailey at that point. And he tries to take an unbelievable touch to bring it down. And he gets the touch wrong, and it goes straight to Bailey, and then they're on the break. And that's one of those where it's like, I'm sure Zinchenko, five times out of ten minimum, controls that ball. But it's just not a risk worth taking because he's trying to do it over his shoulder. Just face up to it and head it back towards the box. That's the sort of risk that he takes that I just don't think is worth it anymore. 
Um, you know, there was there were other times where he tried to dribble it away. You know, he was on the right hand side. He tried to dribble it out and got tackled. I think was that when they hit the post. Was that when they hit the post in the second half because Zinchenko was trying to dribble it out? It, it's just, it's not worth the risk. I don't think. I just don't think it's worth the risk anymore. Um, Zinchenko breaking the line and keeping players on side was frustrating. Yeah, he did. He did keep doing that as well. He kept breaking the defensive line because he's he's frightened a bit of, of someone running in behind him because he knows he's not quick enough. But that means that he breaks the line and that rule that you know that renders the whole thing pointless in the first place. Um, but look, it's not all on Zinchenko. It's not all on Zinchenko. Um, and in the first half, by the way, Zinchenko repeatedly found Kai Havertz in those channels with some really good balls. So we could have scored a couple of goals in the first half that would have been Zinchenko assists. So I'm not... He does offer stuff, right? He does offer stuff. My opinion, however, is you could have had uh, Kivior or Tomiyasu at left back and Jorginho or Partey in the midfield would probably have found those passes to Havertz as well. In my opinion. But... You know, it is what it is. Feel like we score too many routine goals and we think I think we need to score more creative goals. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I think that we've definitely become predictable. The thing is, even within our predictability, it's very difficult to stop us. But <clears throat> when we miss chances, it is what it is. Someone uh, further back said, apparently, uh, Tuchel said that Sane is a doubt as well. I don't think Sane is a doubt. I, I, I think Tuchel's playing mind games i think sane will play i think he was re <coughs> he was rested <clears throat> um but yeah i'm thinking tommy isn't fully fit yet i thought he would have started yesterday for sure yeah i don't know i don't know but it it's we've been very very slow reintegrating injured players if you look at how slowly tommy asu's come back you look at how slowly thomas Partey's come back like, for me, I get it that Jorginho probably couldn't start yesterday. But why couldn't Thomas Partey? Same at left back. Why couldn't Tommy Asu start? I mean, why couldn't Kivio start, really? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, do you think Zinchenko, Gabi Jesus, and to some extent Kieran Tierney and Fabio Vieira are sort of the casualties of our ra very rapid progression under Mikel? We outgrown them this fast? Yeah. Yeah. Like... T Tierney and Fabio Vieira are slightly different. But if you just look at Gabby, Jesus, and Zinchenko, they were, like it or not, surplus to requirements in a title-winning team. If you ask Man City fans, and I was speaking to Nobbins, who's a Man City fan today about this, he said they were not, they were not league-winning players. They won the league at City, but they weren't league-winning players. When we brought them in, the ambition was to get into top four. And they are absolutely good enough to take a team from fifth or sixth into the top four. But in the same way that they weren't league-winning players for Man City, they're not league-winning players for us. I think that's it. I think that that's their ceiling. Uh, it is what it is. You know, I think we did progress more quickly than we even thought that we would. Uh, maybe it's... Oh, no, no. It's definitely to prevent reoccurring injuries. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a bad, a bad thing. You look at the way that other teams have rushed players back this season and had so many injury issues reoccurring. It's not a bad thing. Do you think Arsenal is Gyokoresh's favourite transfer? Yeah, there was a... We had it from some source the other day that uh, that Arsenal was Gyokoresh's preference. I can't remember where it was now, but let me try and find it. Uh, I can't remember where it was, but someone definitely said yeah, someone definitely said the other day that, that Arsenal was where Gyokadosh wants to go. Um, thoughts on calls for Arteta out? Apologies if you've already touched on this. Ah, oh, just idiots, mate. Idiots. People people are running their agendas, right? People are desperate to be right. Like, I'll happily admit I was wrong about yesterday in terms of I did I took it too easily. I didn't rate their midfield enough. I got it wrong. Uh, I've been wrong about loads of things. But some people just, they're so desperate to be right. They, they're they desperate to be right about Arteta out. In 2024, we've we've played 12 Premier League games. We've won 10, drawn one, and lost one. And they want to get rid of him. Who are you going to go and get? Who are you going to go and get? 
Liverpool, with arguably the best manager in their history, there are Liverpool fans that will tell you Klopp is the best manager in their history, who have had the best period in their history, got one title off Pep Guardiola's Man City. Who are you going to go and get? And they never have an answer to that. They've never got an answer to who they would go and get. You know? There are three managers in history that have beaten a Pep Guardiola team to a title. Mourinho, when he was at his absolute best. Conte at Chelsea, but that was Pep's first year at Man City, where they finished third on like 78 points. And... And Klopp. And Klopp in that season. That's it. They're the only they're the only people that have ever beaten him. And none of them beat him more than once. So who are you gonna go who what manager are you gonna go and get that's gonna come in and take this Arsenal team and win the league with it? And it, it what in their first year or second year? I don't see it. I don't see it. Did I no guess the Guna? We haven't had guess the Guna yet. Nishan, no worries, good to see you. Here's the point. Who is the manager on the right? Uh, who is the manager on his right mind want to go to our team with our passing grade as a title? Yeah, who would you even get? Who would you? Who would you? Who would? Who would you get? I don't think anyone really would want to take a job where the only way that you can progress from Mikel Arteta at Arsenal is if you win the title. That is the only improvement you can make at Arsenal right now is if you win the title. What manager in the world even backs themselves? to come to the Premier League and beat Pep Guardiola. I don't know. It said that Zidane might just be the new manager for Bayern. Maybe. Maybe. The manager market right now is kind of in a weird stage. Lots and lots of younger revolving managers who, are need, uh, who neither are quite ready for the bigger stuff. Exactly. Exactly. And by the way, do you know one of the biggest reasons that the manager market is in the mud at the moment? One of the biggest reasons the manager market's in the mud is because of the exact people that are Arteta at. The exact people that think a young manager who is clearly developing a team should be sacked if they don't win something. Look at Nagelsmann being sacked by Bayern Munich. It's ridiculous. And it's happened across the board. Managers are not given the time to win things anymore. And so you look around and you go, well, you know, that manager won one thing there, but then he didn't do very well there. And that manager won one thing there, but then he didn't do very well there. It's because none, none of them are ever given the time. None of them are ever given the time anymore. And that's why the manager market's in the mud. And every time there is a good young up-and-coming man, look at Xabi Alonso. One season, all right, brilliant season. Liverpool, Real Madrid and Bayern Munich want him. You know, it's, the, the manager market is a mess. Uh, and right now, we've got a very, very good manager who is learning on the job, who has taken us far further than we thought he would. Look at where we are. I mean, sometimes you do have to just... Sit, you know, you, you've got to take a step back and actually look at where we are compared to where we were. None of us thought we were going to be here. None of us thought we were going to be here. You know, we're, we're Wednesday night we play a Champions League quarter final, and it's not it's not beyond the realms of possibility that we reach the semi final. You know, we're back. We're back. We're gutted about the fact that on the fifteenth of April we've just lost our first Premier League game of twenty twenty four having won 10 of them and drawn at the Etihad. It's, you know, I think people just have to be realistic. I think people have to be realistic. Um, one of their points with that, Arteta won the FA Cup with that team, so it wasn't bad. Yeah, but no one quite comprehends. Look, Ten Hag won a Carabao Cup last season, right? It means nothing. Like... All Arteta winning the FA Cup did was prove that he could be pragmatic. Because we didn't play the way Arteta wanted. Look at the way we play now compared to the way we played when we won that FA Cup. Arteta just took a group of players that weren't his players and went into each individual match thinking, how the hell can I win this game? And the answer was a back five and a Bamiyang on the counter-attack. That in the league was only good enough for eighth place. That's the difference. Uh, thoughts on the 11th for Wednesday? We'll do that on tomorrow night's stream. Uh, and look, anyway, it is time for Guess the Guna, the game where I give you five clues about an ex or current Arsenal player, and you have to guess who that player is. First person to get it right 
with the immense pride and respect of the Rory Talks football community. Let's I, I said this was going to be a happy stream. I, to be honest, I don't think there was any way of making it a happy, upbeat stream. But let's have a good old guess the gooner. Uh, let's have a good old guess the gooner to get things uh, positive. Clue number one. This player is 39 years old. I like the Maitland Niles shout. Because of him scoring that penalty last night, you know me. I like it. Uh, <clears throat> they made their Arsenal debut in 2012. They made their Arsenal debut in 2012. Clue number three, they scored 10 goals in 221 games for Arsenal. They scored 10 goals in 221 games for Arsenal. Clue number four, they currently work at the club. Clue number four, they currently work at the club. And clue number five, they won the World Cup in 2014. They won the World Cup in 2014. I'm surprised. It took people a little while to get there today. I am surprised. Um, let me go back. Let me go back. Oh, actually, I'm glad I went back. I'm glad. I, 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 ne I, was, I nearly got a VAR checked then. I thought I knew who the winner was. And then I went back and it was someone else. I would have been, that would have been a hard VAR check. But the winner is Stu MC. It's Pam Mertesacker. What a man. What a man. And Stu MC, I think that's Stu's first ever win. Stu, let us know. Is that your first ever win? If it is, welcome to the club and congratulations. Uh, lots of you were saying Ramsey, Cazorla, Mikel Arteta, Santi Cadorla. Um, who was second? Who was second? Yeah, you, Mertes, you got it well before anyone else. Ian Smith was second. That was who I thought had won it before I did the uh, the check. So Ian Smith was second. Um, Carl was third. Um, Young Tart was fourth. Questionable spelling. And uh, Nishan was fifth. So there you go. Congratulations to Stu MC. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, you said the wrong German with Godran Mustafi. Got it on 39 as I'm 35. Impressive. Impressive. <clears throat> but I do rate. I rated the uh, I rated the Ainsley Maitland Niles shout because him scoring that penalty last night. That would have been that would have been smart. That would have been smart. Uh, anyway. Time. If you were fourth on your screen, you weren't fourth on my screen. It's uh, the way it goes. Your internet, your internet, not me. Um, anyway, it is time for Guess the Nonguna, uh, the game where I give you the entire career path of a player who does not and has not played for Arsenal. And you have to guess who that player is in the chat. First person to get it right wins the immense pride and respect of the Rory Talks football community but a bit less respect than Stu MC. Uh, so this player started their career at Wolverhampton Wanderers. They started their career at Wolverhampton Wanderers. They went to Everton. They went to Manchester City. They went to West Brom. They went to Aston Villa. They went to AEK Athens. And they went to Sunderland. So Wolves, Everton, Man City, West Brom, Aston Villa, AEK Athens, and Sunderland. Let's see who got it first. It was not John Stones. It was not John Stones. General John Stones. Uh, uh, it was not Connor Cody, although I like it because he did play for Wolves and Everton. Uh, but he never played for Man City. Uh, the first person to get it correct was Sam Shapiro. There you go. Sam Shapiro. Jolian Lescott. It was Jolian Lescott. Sam Shapiro got it first. Sport Cat got it second. Uh, Carl got it third. Uh, Ian Smith got it fourth. And MM got it fifth. So there you go. There you go. Sam Shapiro has been pretty decent. Sam Shapiro has been pretty decent. Um, VAR check. No, I don't need to VAR check that one. I don't need to VAR check that one. Sport cat, you were second, I'm pretty sure. I said you were second. Yeah. Sport cat, you were second. 
Sam Shapiro was ahead of you. 100%. 100%. Um, Chelsea Everton predictions. 1-1. One, 1-1 one. One, one between Chelsea and Everton. 1-1. One, one. Uh, yeah, it was your internet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can't believe you timed me out for saying Gianluca Scamacca. Actually, one of the mods must have timed you out for saying Gianluca Scamacca, but I don't blame them. I don't blame them. Um, I think Lescott is another age thing. I remember the name, but don't really know him. He retired. I mean, realistically, he properly retired in 2015, I guess. That was when he moved to... Well, no. Yeah, 2015-ish, I guess. Um, lukewarm Palmer disaster class incoming. Yeah, we'll see. It'll be an interesting game, to be honest. It will be an interesting game. Look, that is going to be the end of the stream. I massively appreciate all of you that have joined. Look, I know a lot of people have been avoiding Arsenal content today, which I understand. Um, views are down. And I get it, right? You don't want to be reminded of yesterday, necessarily. So I do appreciate everyone that's joined, everyone that's watched. Um, if you can subscribe, if you're not already subscribed, if you can like the video, it does help me out. But look, tomorrow... We'll be back 6.30 as usual. It will be the preview for the Bayern Munich game. Um, and we've just got to be positive. We've got to be positive. Uh, but look, until then, I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic evening and goodbye.